Hi, I'm Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today, where we explore the latest in healthcare technology trends in health IT. Today, I'm sitting down with the team from San Bernardino County, and we're going to be talking about their innovative use of GIS in, for public health and other aspects of their business. With me today is Serene, Hello. Chris, and Lap, who are all with San Bernardino. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. I'm excited. I'm excited for this because GIS uh, is definitely very useful for counties. We, a lot of the people here at the Esri User Conference, which is where we are, are from counties and are talking about how they're using uh, GIS. But I want to ask you, Serene, how is, are you using GIS for public health? We've used uh, GIS in a lot of different ways, actually. Um, we've tried to implement it in all the different programs that we support, and public health is made out of con communicable diseases, uh -huh. um, environmental health, family health services, animal care and control. So we have used um, you know, dashboards and ArcGIS online maps and apps um, and try to you know, help every program with their, with their work. The biggest example is the COVID-19 dashboard and hub, okay. if you might have seen it. Um, that was when we, we really were, um, you know, sort of went, came to, you know, to the call, uh -huh. you know, to, to implement GIS in, in a very, like, big and serious way. Okay. And so we created, uh, we, we went every, we did everything from automating the data and the update process to then pushing the data up to maps and tables, and then onto a dashboard. And the dashboards actually grew uh, over time into you know, additional like data, and additional indicators, additional charts. And these were mainly because of community concerns. You know, we wanted to be able to help the schools, we wanted to help the cities understand what was going on in, in their jurisdictions. So it grew, and um, today what we see is the result of that. It's a hub with different pages and a dashboard. And these pages, are they used by people internally as well as people externally? Absolutely. It's for the, for the pub, general public, but also within uh, our leadership uses the dashboard and the hubs for decision making, policy making, situational awareness. Amazing, amazing. Chris, let me ask you, uh, how do you get started on your GIS journey? What was the impetus to even look at GIS as a possible solution to some of these challenges? Yeah, I, I think one of the main impetus um, of, of starting a GIS program started in um, environmental health. Okay. And um, for environmental health, they did have to track over 10,000 different assets, everything from restaurants to mosquito trapping um, and inspectors out in the field. And so we needed a system to be able to track that just in maps, but you know, also in dashboards and, and collecting um, you know, KPIs and things like that. Um, we obviously um, you know, extended that in those solutions out to the other programs as well, including nutrition, um, WIC, and some other programs as well. Um, in the meantime, we've always been taking uh, trainings through Esri, um, specifically for hub, um, dashboards, and that really prepared us for you know, what came you know, with, when, when COVID-19 started. Um, it really allowed us to, as Marie, uh, um, Serene mentioned, um, to collect the data that we need, compile that, um, clean that data using um, tools like Python, and then being able to automate that process to, to really reduce the amount of time our analysts are spending on. Yeah, we, we've, we've heard from a lot of other counties while we've been here where uh, it started with sort of one map or yeah. one application, mm -hmm. and then it kind of blossomed and grew from there. Yeah. Was that kind of your yeah. experience as well? Yeah, exactly. Like like I said, with, with um, environmental health, it started with the inspectors. Um, they also had to do a lot of that work out in the field as well, especially with our vector control um, inspectors. They had to get on the apps. We needed to collect data on the field, and that needed to be updated on a web map too. Um, again, producing dashboards, um, the, dashboards from that uh, to be able to see some of the metrics going on, what kind of mosquitoes, um, where the mosquitoes are at and so forth. And so, yeah, it, it kind of blossomed into this uh, you know, big production now that all of our programs are using in public health. Awesome, awesome. Lap, talk to me a little bit about GIS. Like what, what do you guys, what do you, what do you, what's going on in your world? Oh, GIS, Denver? so I think it was Serene who first introduced me to GIS and I just, 
well, fell in love with it. So the ability to kind of geolo geolocate um, various aspects of, and that is really where data points are at, you know. Okay. Uh, the ability to visualize data on a map. So that just give a new kind of a way of to visualize and make informed decision about the community and what is being impacted and how we can make certain decisions that is data driven to kind of uh, change then it create lasting impact for the community. And what, what has some of that impact been like in terms of either impacting citizens or your own staff? Like what, what's sort of been some of the benefits? Yeah, definitely for some of the data, um, definitely data is when, when it comes to the use of data, it's definitely critical for kind of inform and educate the public as okay. well as debunk various myths about misinformation and promote health in the community. So, and all that is being done from the standpoint of a data-driven decision-making from the leadership, from the partners at the community, as well as various stakeholders. Um, and I can give one specific example mm -hmm. in terms of um, how we use the S3 solution to kind of create those kind of lasting impact for the community, where, for example, we use both um, the dashboard as well as the, uh, the map uh -huh. to kind of uh, inform high up decisions to create, to kind of uh, make the decision in terms of how to allocate certain vaccines right. to the community where it's most needed. Um, so that, that is the type of work that we've been working towards uh, kind of creating a lasting impact for the community. So it sounds like you were able to be much more efficient with the deployment of your resources exactly. into areas that was going to have the highest exactly. impact because you knew from the maps and from exactly. GIS where to, right. where to go. It's, but it's about allocating um, resources, especially during the COVID era, um, which we're kind of weaning off at this point. But in terms of vaccination and the vaccination, when it first rolled out, it was very limited in supply. So therefore, we kind of had to kind of uh, re like being very smart in terms of how we like kind of allocate those kind of resources to the community. Love it. Love it. Well, Lap, Chris, Serene, thank you so much for being on the program and sharing all this wonderful information of how San Bernardino has been using GIS. Thank you for having thank us. You. This has been Colin Hung with Healthcare IT Today. If you like this interview as much as I did, please like, subscribe, and mash that button wherever you're listening and watching this. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com where you can find the latest news and insights. This has been Colin Hung. Thanks for being here.